Joining me now is uh, Congressman Ron Paul. Hello, Congressman. How are you, sir? Hello, Glenn. Good to be with you. Good to be with you. Um, first of all, I, on the FEMA prison thing, I know we've been in contact with your office and we would appreciate any help that you have. I want to make sure we're turning over every stone on anything because there's a lot mm -hmm. of there's a lot of crazy stuff that is being said about these things. And I appreciate you talking to us and and uh, we'll be in touch with you again because I want to make sure that we have everything that you might be concerned with as well. Will you help us on that? Yeah, sir? I don't. Yeah, I don't think all the answers are in. You're concerned that there might be setting up these camps that uh, verge on concentration camps. There's no evidence that I can find that they're ab actually set up. But I, I think there's a justified concern, not, not just because of the legislation is, that has been proposed, because that, doesn't, that piece of legislation doesn't have a lot of co-sponsors. It's not on the verge of being passed. But the atmosphere in Washington is what we have to be concerned about. Yes. You know, since 9-11, dealing with the Patriot Act and repealing the the uh, Posse Comitatus and the Insurrection Act. These are trends that are very, very bad, where personal liberties and civil liberties are not well protected. And FEMA is already very, very powerful, and they overrule when they go in on emergencies. So in some ways, they can accomplish what you might be thinking about, about setting up camps. And they don't necessarily have to have legislation, you know, to do yeah, know. Uh, the things that we dread. But it's something that uh, yeah. uh, certainly I deserves a lot of attention. Right. I, and I want to make it very clear. I, I'm not fearing these things are happening. I want to set the record straight because we've got to know what we can believe in. Now, let me switch topics here. Let me switch to um, Barack Obama has is now taking away some of the charitable donation um, uh, tax deductions if you make over $250,000 a year. This is going to make a huge impact. I was sitting with my doctor today here in New York, and he said to me, he said, Glenn, you know, nobody is really looking at this the right way. As a doctor, Dr. Paul, um, you know that charitable contributions make a huge difference in research. If you don't have charitable contributions, the only other places you can get them is from drug companies that uh, are, are looking to make money, but those are being persecuted by the, the, uh, the country, which leaves us with the second one, which is government. Now the government will control all research, and if you're doing the wrong kind of research, or you're not politically correct, or you're not politically favored, you're not going to get the money. This is going to take the one thing that America has left, medicine, and knock us down. True or false? Uh well, I, I think it's true, and I think you've already used the right word, and that is power. Some people want power over others, and they don't believe in freedom. They don't believe that individuals can make right economic decisions or right personal social decisions. And uh, therefore, they think that they have to take care of everybody. But they're very, very sincere people. They just reject the notion that the average person has any common sense and knows what to do and what is best for them. And uh, this is the reason it is a system of power, but it is a, uh, a presumption that they the politicians and the bureaucrats know so much more, but then there's a bunch of them that really enjoy the use of power, oh. and I think that's the aphrodisiac. I mean, you know what? I, I just I, I brought this in. This is from the New York Times. This is they're talking about Fannie and Freddie, which they said, "Oh, we're just going to bail them out, and then we're going to get right out." The front page of the New York Times today is a story that everybody's talking about. They're not going to give up their power. Barney Frank said, "There's a commitment to restructure these companies, and we're going to want to retain a hand in things." like affordable housing and making sure that the housing economy doesn't be a, become a threat to the entire economy again. They're never going to let go of these things. You never give the government power and then they relinquish it. They're going to control yep. housing now. But they don't always ask for power outright. What they do is they offer you money, whether it's for schools or for medical care or whatever, or these bailouts. The money comes first, and then the power comes later. That is why the temptation to take the money should be resisted yes. because of the regulations that come, and yet the temptation is so great. But we, we, we've been living with that for many decades, the temptation, you know, yeah, student but, loans. Who, but, who, but, what college kids can then live without student loans? The temptation universal is Universal education I mean, is coming. This, yeah. Universal That's education. Well, they, they, Look, they, Obama's been talking about government-sponsored universal, what are they, universal health clinics. Let me just go back full circle to the beginning. Dr. Paul, do you believe that with universal health clinics now all across the country, that a few things will happen, that they will hire doctors that disagree in giving kids birth control, that they will hire doctors that don't want to perform abortions, and some that do, and do you think that they won't treat illegal aliens? I mean, all of those things. 
are going to be turned upside on, on their head because the government will control. Yeah, and that's it. That's one step further. But it started when the government got involved in medical care and they sent the money out and they interfered with the doctor-patient relationship. That's what has been destroyed. We have managed cares. We have corporate medicine. Now we're moving into more government control and the doctor-patient relationship has just about been destroyed. And that is what we should protect and we should allow the market to handle some of these problems in charity. So what do they do? What does Obama do? remove the deductions or make it very difficult to deduct the money. They just don't want to relinquish uh, control over anything. All right, Dr. Paul, thank you very much. Congressman Ron Paul from Texas.